I received a special request from Danielle to clarify a little bit uh, the differences between inductive and deductive arguments. Uh, this course goes so fast and online, you can't raise your hand and ask questions, so I'm glad you wrote me that email, Danielle. So um, I'm gonna give a really quick explanation and then um, if that's good for you, you can just stop the video. But if you need a little more, I'll go on a bit more. So inductive versus deductive arguments, what is the difference? Okay, so here's a bit of terminology just so you know what, what I'm talking about. The word valid means um, the correct formula is being used. Just like a mathematical formula, the correct formula is being used. So I gave you four examples of that, modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, and disjunctive syllogism. That's only four, there's a bunch more that would be valid, but those are the four most famous ones. So those are like four good geometry axioms. You know, if you plug in the right variables, you will get the hypotenuse. So that's what valid means. Sound means you have that correct structure plus you've got um, what you're plugging in is the right variables, statements that are true, okay. In um, induction, it's the same principles, similar, similar principles, they just use different words. So strong is a correlate to valid. It just means you're using the correct formula or structure for an inductive argument. So you've got a good structure. Cogent is a correlate of sound you've got that strong good structure plus all the premises are true. Okay, so that's just some basic terminology. Okay, so what's the difference? Um, okay, well what they taught you in high school is wrong. Fortunately, I've, I've been um, asking my students, um, if, you're of, if you're younger, if you're um, in your teens or 20s, I guess they're not teaching this in high school anymore. But if you're older, my age, um, they totally taught you the wrong thing about the difference between induction and deduction. I won't even confuse you by telling you what that wrong thing is. But here's the right thing. Okay, the difference. Deductively valid arguments is this. The conclusion is guaranteed 100% true. Has to be true if the premises are also true. So this is what... This is what's, it's kind of insane, it's kind of cool. So like, just like math, the Pythagorean theorem, if you plug in the right variables to your geometry theorem and you use the right formula, it is, imp and you do the math right, right? The basic addition, subtraction, division, it is impossible to get the wrong answer. Impossible to get the wrong answer. Same with deductive logic. If you have the right structure, the right formula, you plug in premises that are true, the conclusion is 100% guaranteed, cannot be false. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's deduction. Induction, on the other hand, is this. If the structure is valid, you use the right formula, and the premises are true, the inputs are true, you will probably have the right answer. Um, it would be a good bet to um, take, take it as if the conclusion was true, but it's possible it's false. So inductive arguments are kind of like speculating, like, look, here's all our information. This is probably the case. So it's a good inductive argument, what we call cogent right here cogent if given the information your conclusion is probably true given the information you have in front of you that particular person has in front of them or the institution governing body the CDC has right now given that in uh, information they extrapolate this is going to happen in the future or this will probably happen given that this sample is this number of people this is probably what is reflected in the entire population and it is probable but not guaranteed okay so that's the difference that's the definition if you've got it you can turn off the video here if not i'll give you a little more detail okay all right 
more detail. Okay, and here's an example of an inductive argument. Here's one. In most cases, when my textbook teachers, professors, and experts say something is true, it is. So you're in biology class, you read something in your textbook, it's probably true because it's in your textbook and your teachers assigned it. Okay, so this is a generalization. Your teachers know what they're talking about. Experts know what they're talking about. Okay, so my chemistry textbooks, teachers and professors and experts say that the atomic number of hydrogen is one. All right, so probably you should trust them. They probably know what they're talking about. It's probably true. You don't have to go and get an electron microscope and check it yourself. You could, but um, you are justified in trusting this, right? Now, it could turn out that there's this huge conspiracy theory about the atomic, uh, what do you call, the that chart that has all the atomic numbers. <sighs> okay, whatever that's called, vast conspiracy theory, it's all messed up. That is so unlikely though. So um, you could trust most of what's going on. Is it, is, is it guaranteed that everything that's in your textbook, that every professor says everything that's 100% true, not guaranteed at all. But in general, what you're learning in college, they're probably telling you the truth. Okay, so this is a cogent um, and reasonable, I thought I changed that, cogent and strong argument. Reasonable to believe it. Okay, here's another one, inductive generalization. Most adult humans are over five feet tall. Gigi Hadid is, a, is an adult human. Okay, what is most likely true? What would be a good bet here? Oh, let's put our money on Gigi being over five feet tall. Okay, is it guaranteed that this person Gigi is over five, five feet tall? No, not at all. My mother-in-law is four foot 11. Um, there are people out there that are under five feet tall that are human beings. Okay, um, let me just switch this up. Most women are under six feet tall. Your professor, Beth Secord, is a woman. What should you put your money on here if this was a bet? You should put your money on me being under six feet tall because that's what the odds are. So it's a good guess that I would be part of the majority and not an outlier, right? But um, unfortunately, um, if you put your money on this, I am an outlier, uh, meaning I am not like part of the bell curve. I'm an anomaly, a freak of nature. Just, I'm, I don't really think so. Uh, but I'm six feet and a quarter inch. So, um, so yeah, so an inductive argument, the conclusion could be wrong even though you're justified in believing it. So does that make sense? Yes, okay. But this is the difference between deduction and induction. Truth in, truth out. Okay, so here's another way to look at it and I love this because um, again, Kevin de, de Laplante did this great, um, actually I think he did it with closets but I'm doing it with buckets. Um, so here's a argument, um, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Socrates is mortal. All right, so let's illustrate this. So let's put all the mortals in the world in, sorry, I'm pointing again, in that bucket. So you put all the mortals in the world, okay? How do you illustrate the first sentence? You illustrate it by saying, all the men go into the mortals bucket. Okay, so all the men in the world go in there if all men are mortal. So that's the way you illustrate premise one, okay? So now all the men are in the men bucket and the men bucket, I'm pointing again, men bucket are in the mortals bucket. Okay, now let's, so we've illustrated premise one. Let's illustrate premise two. Socrates is a man, okay? How would you illustrate premise two? Where does Socrates go? in the man bucket, okay? Now, this is the cool part. If you have a um, valid argument structure, you've got um, true premises, 
um, you're going to, um, well, the conclusion is going to be true, but if it's valid, by illustrating, by drawing premise one and drawing premise two, you don't have to do anything else. You've already drawn premise three, right? So the conclusion is just restating in different words what you've already said. The conclusion is just contained, it's already contained in here. You're not adding anything new. There's no new information. You're just saying, um, I said this, all men are mortal, Socrates is a man. And let me just tell you in other words what I just said, Socrates is mortal. Um, so no new information. So you look, this is how you check to see if it's a valid argument. Have I already drawn? Do I need to move anything around? No. Um, look, where is Socrates? Socrates is in the mortal bucket. You've already done it, so it's it's valid. So I think this is such a cool way of seeing um, how this works. Okay, um, this is cool too. Um, I don't want to confuse you. Um, let's look at um, an invalid argument. Okay. So this is an invalid argument, has a bad form. And this is how we can tell it's bad. Okay, premise one, all banks are financial institutions. Wells Fargo is a bank, Wells Fargo is, Wells Fargo is a financial institution, therefore Wells Fargo is a bank. Okay, so here's the big bucket, what goes in the big bucket. Um, every single financial institution goes in that big bucket. Right, how do we draw premise one? Well, it says banks. All banks are financial institutions, every single one. So let's put a bank bucket. All the banks go in there. All right, now premise two, Wells Fargo is a financial institution. How do you draw that? Where do you put Wells Fargo? Well, here's the problem. It doesn't say. It doesn't say whether it goes up here or oh, I'm pointing again. Okay, it doesn't say whether it goes up here or in here. And that's the problem, you have not illustrated the conclusion, Wells Fargo is a bank, by drawing premise one and premise two, by illustrating premise one and premise two. You have not already said that Wells Fargo is a bank. People will be left wondering, is it a financial institution that is a bank? Or is it a financial institution that's not a bank? And this is tricky because in the back of our heads, well, we know it's a bank, right? But suppose we use another word, word like um, uh, there's an English bank, um, Barclays. And you're like, I've never heard of Barclays. Okay, Barclays is a financial institution, therefore Barclays is a bank. And you're left wondering, is Barclays um, a bank that's a financial institution or is it a financial institution that's a non-bank? That's why this is invalid. Okay, so the difference between inductive and deductive arguments is, um, let's go back. Ooh. All right, so um, the in inductive arguments, the um, conclusion has extra information. It goes beyond the premises. Um, it's making guesses about the future, or it's generalizing about the general population, or you've surveyed 50 CSN students and you're using that data to extrapolate about all CSN students. Um, that's inductive. It's going beyond the information you have. Okay. Deductive arguments does not go beyond. It um, just restates what you've already said. Okay, I hope that helped. Danielle, thank you for answering that question. And please, any of you, if you think something's unclear, just uh, send me an email, let me know, because that's very helpful feedback. All right, have a great, hot, summer, June day. Bye.